Thank you, Wolfgang. Yes, welcome everyone also from my side. Um, I'm working also for Ruprecht Consult and I've been quite closely involved in the development of this SCMP self-assessment online tool. So I'm very happy to present it to you today. Um, I will have two parts of my presentation. So first I will, on a few slides, give you an introduction about the background and the general aims. And then the main part will be that we simply live have a look at it. I'll go onto the, onto the tool and show you the different functionalities um, in parallel explaining how it could maybe help you to also improve your mobility planning. And afterwards, we will have time for uh, questions and answers and discussion, of course. So why has this been developed? What's the background? Um, some of you might know the previous self-assessment, which was online from 2016 to 2020. Um, so there was an official tool before, but it had to be revised for several reasons. So firstly, um, we wanted to make it usable also for cities that do not have an SUMP. We know that there's a lot of cities who do interesting mobility planning activities, but do not have prepared such a strategic plan. And of course, we also want to support them in their activities. Secondly, and I think Wolfgang mentioned this already strongly, the functional urban area dimension is extremely important for mobility planning. Um, but most cities still plan mainly for, me, for their administrative area because it can be quite a challenge to cooperate with neighboring municipalities. Sometimes they might have different traditions or different interests. So it can be challenging to get everyone at the table. And that's something we wanted to uh, focus on much more in this new self-assessment. So this is much more giving you the chance to, to start and kick off a cooperation. And then thirdly, also mentioned by Wolfgang, there has, is a new edition of the SMP guidelines and the new self-assessment is fully in line with that one and integrates a lot of the content of the guidelines. So in the last years, we, uh, we developed a new self-assessment, fully updated the questionnaire and tested it at several occasions with different city partners. So on the one hand, in the Civita Sums Up project, we had seven cities um, who, who were involved in the project and who, who all in depth tested the tool. And then on the other hand, from LOCAP, we had several workshops where cities tested it in a, in a group setting. At the top at the, on the photo, you can see, for example, a test in Krakow, where both the city of Krakow and the nearby smaller city of Skavina tested it together. And the photo at the bottom, for example, is, is a Civitas Forum conference where we also launched a demo version and tested it together with different cities and other experts. So finally, after a lot of work, we were happy to launch it last uh, month at the final sums up event. Um, let, let's uh, get right into the tool itself. Why should you be interested in it? I mean, there's a lot of tools out there. There's a lot of material online. Why should you care about this one? Well, we think that um, this is a really easy way to get feedback and to, to get good ideas and new inspiration how to improve your planning activities. So this is really a tool that is mainly there for the cities, for the city planners who, who want to develop their activities. Um, it has a very, it's not so much focusing on numbers or measuring exactly, it's more about giving feedback and inspiration. What is your city good at? What could be improved and how? So it's focusing a lot on concrete suggestions, on ideas and links in the results page. But I'll show you more of that later. And as I mentioned, it's it's a lot also, it can be a good structure, a good framework if you want to improve cooperation, both within your organization or with other cities around you. This could be a good structure to start and kick off a discussion. And what I think makes this tool unique is that it's online free and quite quick to use. So there's also um, other ways, of course, to get feedback, 
which are very helpful in a longer workshop, maybe several day workshop where an external auditor would come to your city. But we think that before doing that, it can be quite valuable just in 20 minutes to two hours to get a quick feedback and kick off some first ideas with a really low barrier. So basically anyone could do this who is well involved in the city mobility planning activities. Which is um, where we are at uh, who can use it, who are you? I mean, we already know you're all from Europe, but let's hear a little bit more about your background. Sedrina, could you kick off the next poll question? Sure. All right. Okay, we've had some varied answers here. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is really interesting that there's a lot of you. I mean, of course, um, not everyone knows the exact status, but otherwise it's quite varied. So there's a lot of cities who are interested but haven't gotten that active yet. But then there's also a fair amount of cities who is quite advanced and already has a plan and is implementing it. And good thing about this tool is that um, it can be used by cities at very different stages. So both those that don't have such an SCMP strategic plan and those that have it, they, they get tailor-made sets of questions. So in the beginning, you're asked about your status and some other key facts about your city. And based on that, then you get tailor-made questions that fit your situation. And this, this both concerns the status of planning, but also if you're focusing just on the city area or if you're so focusing on the functional urban area. And what I would say is maybe most important um, is that you, of course, need to know about the mobility planning uh, activities in your city. If you want to assess an SUMP, of course, you should know what's in there, how has it been developed, because most of the questions will be about that. And that's why I think most of the people who would usually use this tool are working for the city or maybe working for a regional planning authority, or at least they are the ones that are closely involved in the planning activities. So the tool is mainly made uh, for, for this target group. But let's have a short sneak preview, preview at the tool before I show it live. So there's this, 30 to 45 questions, depending on on uh, on what type of city you are. Um, some examples here to the right. So it's always several question answer possibilities, and then you select all of them that apply, the multiple choice, or you're asked to select the one that fits best. And so you click your way through, and then after you're done, you get quite an extensive feedback and results page where you get feedback based on the eight principles that Wolfgang showed earlier. So for each of them, you get a general feedback. Um, are, you, are you already very good at it? Congratulations. Are you doing something very uh, good, but other things could be improved or on the right path? Or is there a lot of uh, improvement, which would give you a red score here? Uh, you get an overview and a spider, and then you get also extensive texts with concrete suggestions, um, links, to good practices, to further readings, and to tools. But um, I will also give you a glimpse of that later online. And as I mentioned, you can either just click through it alone, one planner, and that only takes 20, 30 minutes, quite quick. Or you do it in a workshop setting. There we recommend one and a half to two hours, because every usually spark discussions, quite interesting discussions that help you further develop your activities. But that's why it needs, needs more time then. But let's not further talk about theory and go to the page itself. Um, do you see the starting page? So let me just move away. The control board for the webinar. So you see on the top right corner right now it's in English. At the moment, German is also available, but there will be much more language, languages 
being added soon. So you can change your language in the top corner. Then you can enter a code if you have started filling in the assessment before and have made a break, or you filled it in entirely and you want to look at your results again, you will get your personal code, which only which gives access to your results only to you. And then there's a general intro text, of course, um, which mainly summarizes the things that I've already talked about. What I would like to highlight is, of course, that the data is treated strictly confidential, so no one else will get access to your data, and any way they are used, they will always be fully anonymized. But then, uh, what happens if you want to actually fill it in? So in the beginning, you, you get your personal code, as you can see, and we recommend that you would uh, write it down somewhere so that you can get back to your results later. Um, then you're asked a few question, general questions about your city. So in which country it's uh, located, what it's called, if it's big or small, um, and so on. What is important is this page. Here you're asked, do you want to assess your SUM an SUMP? So this sustainable urban mobility plan or a similar strategic plan focusing on transport. Um, or do you just want to assess your general mobility planning activities? And based on what you select here, uh, you get a different questionnaire. Let's say now we, we just want to assess the general activities. And then the second important filter question here is, which geographical area do you want to assess? Just the city or the wider functional area or even a metropolitan area larger than that? Um, as it can be quite difficult to get data for these larger areas, um, many might in the beginning select just the city. So let's just click on the city for now. Um, and then of course you, you just asked uh, who you are a little bit and then it, it starts. So those were just the general intro questions and all of the other questions will be about the way mobility is planned in your city. Um, I will just show you a few of them and um, because they all have a, a very similar structure. And then I think we, we should spend our time looking more at the results section. So this one, for example, is about in what form did your team reflect on the strengths and weaknesses? Um, Usually a lot of people are involved in mobility planning activities, at least in bigger cities, but even in smaller cities, it's not only the person that's doing the transport planning, but mobility is of course relevant also for the people that do city development, but also the city, the people that work on environment or economy. I mean, it really is across these themes. So there should be, uh, Optimally, there should be time for some reflection. How could we improve? What's working well? What's not working well? So this question asks you, in, in what way did you do that in the last year? And then you would select whatever applies to you. Uh, yeah, I reflected on my own, but I also discussed, discussed with colleagues. So let's say it's like this and so on. So you, you uh, fill in all these questions and then uh, uh, we would get so here you see an overview. Now we are in the first uh, section on mobility assessment, first content section. Then uh, for each of the sections, there's a few questions. So you slowly work your way through the, uh, through the questionnaire and after 20 to 30 minutes, it would be done and you would get to the results. So let's look at what the results look like. And for that, I would simply go back to the start and then enter the code of a imaginary city that I have entered myself. So this is not real results. This is just to show you how it could look like. So on the results page, first you see this visual overview. So you see the different uh, principles on the side. And then you see in a spider web, how good are you from from in the middle would be the lowest score and the further you are to the out, the better your score. So this imaginary city, for example, is really quite good at assessing current and future performance, studying how is mobility uh, in my city 
the different aspects, has surely analyzed cycling, has analyzed walking, public transport, and did all the different modes and other topics, but is not involving the citizens and stakeholders so much. So this could be the first idea you get um, as a planner after filling in, oh, maybe I could work a little bit more on my participation activities. Then you get to a section where you get a more detailed feedback for each of these eight principles. So first, just the overview, color-coded, but then you can open it here on the site, and then you get a more detailed feedback, giving a short summary, what this principle is about, about how you have scored, and then giving you concrete advice, what you could maybe do to further improve. Um, here, in this case, this imaginary city is already doing uh, a good job, but has room for further improvement. So building on existing contacts with transport planners from other cities around you, you could try to make this a regular thing, to establish a regular format. For example, using the self-assessment as a structure for the discussion at the first meeting. Um, and there is, so this is just an example, and there's always for each of the principles, there's three or four concrete advice what you can do. And what I think is also quite interesting is that there is a lot of links to further interesting examples. So here, good practices, those are always other cities that have done a really good job at this specific aspect. And when you click on, click on it, you get directly forwarded to uh, the page, the sub page of the SUMP guidelines where this example is mentioned. And then, so this is, the, and the same happens also for recommended further readings. So those are also either chapters of the guidelines or specific topic guides that, uh, that give you more advice for this topic. So this is uh, about the functional urban area, which also LOCA focuses a lot on. So there is, for example, a guide specifically about SUMP in metropolitan regions. So if, you're, if you want to work better together in the metropolitan regions, could be interesting to click on that one, and then you get directly forwarded to the, to the report. So you see, and there's a lot of things to employ, explore here. And, for, and the idea was for putting in a limited amount of time as a city, as I said, 20 minutes to two hours, that you would get quite a lot out and a lot of new ideas that might maybe help you, hopefully help you to improve. Um, and I think that is the, the main section. Below, you also get your results in detail. And at the very bottom, what I think is quite helpful is, on the one hand, you can export your results as a PDF. Also, for example, if you want to print them out and show them to colleagues, um, this is a good way. And you can export your results in an Excel format, so you can analyze them all. You could also analyze them uh, if you want. Um, and I think that's it about for the results page. And I think it's time for our next poll question before I show you another feature of the results page. Sabrina, could you kick off the next poll question? Oh, here it comes. All right, we've just started to reach over half of everyone who's answered. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll now. Okay, you should be able All right. to see the results. Yes, interesting. Um, so in most cases, I would say the cities in the surrounding do not are not that active on SUMP, or at least they don't have this type of plans yet. 
but some of them have. And if you want to improve the cooperation on mobility, for example, if you want to develop an SEMP together, or each of you wants to develop their own plan, but you want to link it and develop it in parallel and have it really well integrated so that your measures don't contradict each other, but rather help each other. But also, if you don't want to develop this specific type of plan, you just want to better coordinate your mobility planning activities, it can be interesting to to fill in the SCMP self-assessment, each on your own, and then you each get your code and you could meet and then compare your results. So this is what I'm doing here now. Um, you remember I had the first code, which I loaded. Now let's say you have a colleague who has come over and who has also filled in the self-assessment and has brought their code. So you enter it, and then you see in the spider, you see a comparison. Uh, one city and the other city, or it could be colleague A and then colleague B from another department and both have assessed the mobility planning activities of the same cities, but they might have different ideas or impressions how it works. So all of this can give you quite interesting uh, results. Um, why do I think this works well, but you don't think what, what works well, uh, what could be What's the reason behind this difference and how could we change it? Um, so I think this type of comparison, it sparks a lot of uh, it sparks a lot of interesting discussions. Just to show, you can even enter more results, at, yeah, up to 10 at least. And so you can sit together with a bigger group of colleagues and discuss this. And you can also then hear in the detailed results you can show them next to each other. Um, and if this is uh, a bit hard to see, then of course you can see more items per page, but you could also download it, of course, into the Excel and then see it to each other. And then you could dig more in detail into the different questions. So this is just the first glimpse. I think it's quite a powerful results page, which sparks a lot of interesting discussions. Um, and I strongly encourage you to simply explore it for yourself while I will go back to my presentation um, on the second last to last slide, just to give you a short uh, announcement of what is going to happen next. I mean, the tool is done, the tool is available. It is on www.sump-assessment.eu, as you might have seen, and feel free to go, to go there. But soon it's also going to be available in a lot more languages, including all the Central European languages, thanks to LOCAP, but also other languages beyond that, European languages, and even a lot of people from South America starting to use it with the Spanish version. And finally, on my last slide, I just wanted to give you an overview other tools that might help you with SEMP in addition to the self-assessment. Um, so there's, of course, ELTIS that you might know. There's the guidelines in the middle that we have talked about so much. The guidelines have also been visualized in different ways as a poster, as a, as a fan. And then, of course, there's tons of good practice examples also on, Civita, on the Civitas website. There's e-courses in our Mobility Academy and further tools in the tool inventory. So if you're interested in SUMP, there really is plenty to explore. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Lasse, for this interesting insight into the new updated self-assessment tool.